Based on differences in the cell wall structure, the kingdom prokaryoti is divided into four divisions. Gram-positive cell walls, gram-negative cell walls, cells without walls, and cells with unusual walls. These major divisions are separated further into subtypes based on characteristics discussed later in this lesson. The bacterial subtypes are next classified into genera, the plural of genus, and species. Members of a genus share the same heredity. However, they differ from each other in certain morphological and behavioral ways. For example, both an ancestral human called Erectus and a modern human belong to the same genus. At the level of species, classification of bacteria and humans differs. In humans and other animals, the term species refers to a natural population that cannot successfully breed with another group, like Neanderthals and modern humans. In contrast, bacteria within a species are as similar to one another as one human is similar to another human. Finally, some bacterial species may be divided further into strains that share a particular characteristic that is not common to the rest of the species. Individuals of the same strain are equivalent to identical twins since they are all descendants of the same parental cell. In clinical medicine, the shared characteristic that defines a particular strain is often resistance to an antibiotic to which the species was once susceptible. The relationship of individual bacteria to one another is often described by a system of binomial nomenclature in which the name for a species of bacteria consists of two parts, both of which are usually Latin or Greek. In the bacterial species named Streptococcus pneumoniae, Streptococcus is the genus and pneumoniae represents the species. In standard usage, the genus is always capitalized while the species is not. Additionally, the genus name is written out the first time it appears in a document but is then abbreviated as a single initial thereafter. Thus, Streptococcus pneumoniae becomes S. pneumoniae. The major characteristics used to classify bacteria into genus and species are cell shape and arrangement, gram stain reaction, oxygen requirements, and nutritional and metabolic characteristics. Differences in cell shape and arrangement provide an initial clue to the identity of a bacterial genus and species. The three basic shapes of bacterial cells are coccus, round, bacillus, rod-shaped, and spirochete, spiral. Some coccoid bacteria, or cocci, exist as single cells. However, when other cocci divide and reproduce, individual bacteria remain attached to each other. These groups include pairs of cells, diplococci, chains of cells, streptococci, and clusters of cells, staphylococci. A major characteristic for classifying bacteria is the Gram-stain reaction, which distinguishes two types of bacterial cell walls. The Gram-stain dye process stains Gram-positive bacteria dark violet and Gram-negative bacteria red. Due to several layers of a peptidoglycan network, which is made up of amino acids and simple sugar molecules linked by chemical bridges, the cell walls of Gram-positive bacteria are more rigid and stronger than those of Gram-negative bacteria. In contrast, Gram-negative cell walls are more vulnerable to breakage than the thicker, stronger walls of Gram-positive cells. However, Gram-negative cells are quite complex. Between the cell wall and outer membrane and the cytoplasmic membrane of Gram-negative cells is an enzyme-filled gel compartment called the periplasm. Embedded in the gel 
is a small peptidoglycan backbone that provides some strength for the wall. More importantly, gram-negative cell walls contain lipopolysaccharides, molecules made of sugars and fats, that are not found in most gram-positive cell walls. These molecules are involved in the formation of toxins that can be harmful to humans upon their release. Bacteria differ in their need for and tolerance of oxygen. On the basis of whether they can use oxygen for their growth and metabolic processes, bacteria are classified generally as aerobic or aerobes, which use oxygen, and anaerobic or anaerobes, which do not use oxygen. Aerobic bacteria are fragile since they require oxygen for life and a loss of oxygen in their environment kills them. Some aerobes are classified as microaerophilic because they require oxygen in a concentration lower than that present in the atmosphere. In contrast, many anaerobes are less fragile. In particular, facultative anaerobes, which use oxygen when it is available but can survive without it, are the most adaptive bacteria. Anaerobes also include aerotolerant and obligate bacteria. Aerotolerant anaerobes cannot use oxygen but are usually not damaged by oxygen. Obligate anaerobes are unable to use oxygen and are damaged by oxygen. Carbohydrate metabolism is another distinguishing factor used in classifying bacteria. For example, among a number of similar bacteria that inhabit the human intestinal tract, only certain species metabolize carbohydrates such as lactose, a milk-derived sugar. Therefore, the presence of intestinal gas, a byproduct of lactose metabolism, indicates the presence of these specific bacteria.